Well, finally, Carl Rittenhouse got to answer the journalists and the politicians who told the world he was a filthy, nasty white supremacist, the racist who took his gun to a Black Lives Matter protest and callously, deliberately murdered two men. Well, Rittenhouse is still just 18 years old. He's given his first interview since a jury in Minnesota last week correctly found him not guilty. Decided he'd, in fact, shot in self-defence after being attacked in a violent riot as he tried to defend property from being burned. May the jury find the defendant, Kyle H. Kyle H. Rittenhouse, not guilty. Now, in his interview with Fox News' Tucker Carlson, Rittenhouse denied what so many journalists and politicians of the left had claimed before the trial, that he was a racist. This case has nothing to do with race. Um, it never had anything to do with race. It had to do with the right to self-defense. I'm not a racist person. I support the BLM movement. I support peacefully demonstrating. And I believe there needs to be change. I believe there's a lot of prosecutorial misconduct, not just in my case, but in other cases. And it's just amazing to see how, how much a prosecutor can take advantage of somebody. I should repeat what a number of newspapers have got wrong. His two victims, uh, two people he shot dead in self-defense, were not black, they were white. Uh, Rittenhouse said his lawyers were also now looking at what action to take against the media, which would try to hang him before his trial, smeared him. And he had a message too for President Joe Biden, who'd also rushed to judgment and called Rittenhouse on no evidence whatsoever a white supremacist. Mr. President, if I could say one thing to you, I would urge you to go back and watch the trial and understand the facts before you make a statement. And Rittenhouse explained why the jury had got it right. If I was convicted, no one would be able no one would ever be privileged to defend their life against attackers. And thank God they came to the correct verdict of a not guilty. Joining me is Kosha Garda, entrepreneur, founder of Recastled, a media and tech company, and a commentator on American politics. Kosha, great to catch up with you again. The interview that uh, Rittenhouse did with Fox News so this young man, remarkably self-possessed, I've got to say, um, and, and very different to the one that the media and the politicians had portrayed before the trial. How did you see it? Hi, Andrew, good to be back with you. Um, look, I think that question strikes at the one of the central issues. There are a few. One of the central issues for why this case has riveted a nation and much of the world. It, to answer that question about you know why we the way he presented himself comes across differently from what many might have thought depends on which venue one was listening to. So it's sort of like a tale of two countries where half the country that was listening into the justice system and watching the, the judicial process play out, they were not surprised by that. And I think the version of him that they saw yesterday matches what they thought. He found himself in the situation. Uh, the incident occurred. The prosecutor decided to indict him. Evidence was collected and presented. And it was, by the way, publicly available for the last 18 months for people that were in the weeds of that. And it was a fairly open and shut self-defense case. The jury determined that and acquitted him. And then there's the, the other half um, of the country that sort of just is one step, step removed from that, did not focus on the actual judicial process and just wanted the synopses that the media, influencers, various athletes and celebrities have weighed in, politicians, all sorts of Congress people, Governor Gavin Newsom from California, Andrew Cuomo, uh, Hakeem Jeffries, the president himself, as you mentioned, all weighed in and painted a picture. So for them, uh, there's, there was sort of a big disconnect, I think, if they weren't read up on the details of this and saw that. And I think with the verdict and now this interview, there a lot of people are learning facts that have been known for a long time for the first time, and it's casting him in a different light. Yes, it's, uh, it seems that it was used for a long time as a sort of uh, moral signal, uh, a symbol. Uh, there was no reality there at all. He had to be, he had to fulfil the function of being the white racist they were all after, the murderous white racist, and uh, the facts would go hang. Do you think, uh, you mentioned Joe Biden, do you think it's going to get an apology from the president who called him before the trial without any evidence, no evidence at all of this, called him a white supremacist? 
you know, I, I'm old enough to remember there was uh, a time where political leaders did not weigh in, let alone the president and other ones on these issues, just because it, it really pollutes the judicial process. You know, it's especially something like this. This is not just canceling somebody or even something like the Nick Sandman case. This is a, a person who was in the fight for his life. And if he had been convicted, he was going to be put away for life. So just for no other reason at all, people with uh, a megaphone or a platform like the president and others should not weigh in and just let the process play out. Um, in terms of the apology, I mean, now we're moving into the political realm and people are calling for that. I think Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas has publicly said that he should issue an apology. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, and I think what people are watching uh, that we might see is Kyle pursuing sort of libel action against a lot of the people who labeled him in this way without any evidence, uh, including potentially the president who at the time was a private citizen um, and candidate, Biden, while he was a minor, a 17-year-old minor. So, you know, we'll see how, how the libel legal analysis of that plays out, but we might see that coming. What an imbalance. Uh, you know, the, the presidential candidate against a 17-year-old uh, using this guy for votes to smear him. I mean, it's just ridiculous. 